last one. In the Gulf waters off the Texas coast, these divers are on their way to visit an artificial reef. What we're gonna see, we don't know until we get down there. It's amazing and really exciting. I get, it's like my inner nerd comes out. Not just any reef, it's an old ship called the Kraken that's quickly becoming a new Texas legend. Texas Parks and Wildlife Artificial Reef Program out here today to create our latest artificial reef. We're at our reef site, 65 miles out of Galveston, getting ready to reef this ship called the Kraken. We're trying to maneuver into a deep water spot that's at least 140 feet deep. Named after the mythical sea monster, the Kraken is one of the largest ships to be reefed off the Texas coast. Well, in the Gulf of Mexico, the, the bottom is mainly mud and sand. There's not a lot of hard substrate for marine organisms and invertebrates to attach to. This is why we put these out here. Our, our mission is to uh, create and enhance a marine habitat in the Gulf of Mexico. And one way we do that is using materials such as ships. Conditions are perfect. It's nice, it's two to three foot rollers out here, the sun's shining. It's a really good day for reefing. With four large holes cut into the stern of either side of the ship, the Kraken will sink by what's called a controlled flood. Water will rush into the stern, and we're hoping that the stern touches the bottom first, and all that superstructure will fill with water, and it'll bring the bow down nice and slow. The Kraken sinks perfectly and lands dead level on the sea floor. I don't know if we're going to get that GoPro back. It's been seven months, and it's coated. There's a lot of fish on that ship. Massive, massive schools of bait fish, mostly mackerel scad, uh, lots of red snappers. I wasn't expecting it to proliferate that much that quickly after sinking. It's really cool. It only takes a, a few months to get a, a significant amount of marine growth. We did a lot of pre-survey work before the ship was reefed, found uh, a couple of sharks and not much of anything else. No red snapper, no other reef species. And now it's just teeming with marine life. Divers really love wrecks. Every dive is, a, is an experience because even if you've seen the wreck before, you're guaranteed to see something different each time you go down. The site's really nice. We designed it specifically to be easily accessible. Swimming through the bridge, easy. You can go through the lower levels as well if you're comfortable with it and you have more training. The cranes are there. We've got uh, the anchor. The prop is on there if you can get down that far to look at it. Back on the surface, the team has more work to do. We're doing vertical longline fishing. 
We catch a, a number of different species, but most of what we're catching is red snapper. We want to know the age of the snapper that are living on these structures. We also want to know if they're traveling between the structures. Fishing. We'll drop one line at a time. We soak it for five minutes. All right, guys, get ready. Get ready. Got one. one. No bait. Line two. No bait. Line three. No bait. Line four. Red snapper. Line five. All of the fish get measured. Three forty-three. Okay. They get tagged. Tag number four one seven. And then they all get released. Today, we caught over a dozen snapper. The red snapper is enormous. This is 4.6. Nice work, everyone. Teamwork. All right, which one are we dropping next? Releasing the fish at the right depth is critical to recompressing their swim bladder. We use these really interesting hooks called sequelizers, and they have a pressure sensor on them. They're set to 100 feet, so when the line goes and it reaches 100 feet, the pressure release lets go and the hook comes undone and the fish swims off. Adult red snapper live mostly near structures in deep water. That's a red snapper. They've long been a popular catch for both recreational and commercial fishermen. 61. Reefs like the Kraken are helping build a sustainable red snapper population. When fishermen target these structures, they're taking fishing pressure off of the natural reefs. All of these natural reefs that have been the basis of production for economically important fish, like the snapper, well now the pressure is kind of getting relieved because, oh, well now we can go to the Kraken. Considering the ship has only been down here for six months, it's got a lot of productivity going on. We're really happy with the way it's progressing. I don't think it really could have gone any better than what it's showing up to be. It looks great. It's just amazing in such a short period of time how the ocean finds a way. This project was funded in part by a grant from the Sport Fish Restoration Program.